Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. The advance of Turkish-backed militias into northern Syria is leaving a trail of destruction. The Kurdish-led Syrian Defense Forces said the offensive killed 22 of its fighters so far. Uh, this is the same group that provided crucial ground support for the U.S. and coalition efforts against ISIS. And we are seeing images like this one uh, released by the SDF Military Operations Center, purportedly the aftermath of an attack in the offensive. The SDF says four civilians were killed, nine were injured here. NBC News has not been able to independently verify these numbers as of yet. Uh, joining me now live from Turkey near the border with Syria is NBC's Keir Simmons, as well as Kelly Magzaman, Vice President for National Security and International Policy at the Center for American Progress. She also served on the National Security Council in the Bush and Obama administrations. And Joel Rubin, president of Washington Strategy Group. He is a former deputy assistant secretary of state. Um, Keir, I'm going to start with you on this one. Just bring us up to date on what you've been experiencing there so far. Hey, my friend. Well, you know, I think those numbers that you just read out may, I fear, turn out to be nothing in comparison with what we're about to see. Uh, today, we watched uh, Turkish artillery pounding again and again across the, the border into Syria. We watched uh, Turkish attack helicopters fly across uh, to do their own kind of damage. And as we drove back to the safety of, uh, uh, of this location further away from the border, we saw a convoy of Turkish tanks on their way uh, to the Syrian border. So I think while there has been a ground campaign underway, mm. a much larger ground campaign uh, will be planned. And we're not being told by uh, Turkey exactly what the plans are. Turkey is saying it is going to plan, but any students of war will know that uh, things start to go in different directions from the moment the first shot is fired. Uh, and what Turkey is trying to do here uh, is, is challenging, despite their huge advantage militarily, over the Kurds. Uh, there is a lot of focus, of course, on the question of what happens to these ISIS fighters. There are reports from the Kurds that five ISIS fighters escaped from a camp uh, just in the last day or so. Uh, but, of course, there are thousands and there is the worry that they will spill out. Uh, I think one of the things we should really be worried about, actually, is this Turkish campaign going wrong, if you like, that the bloodshed becomes such that there is such an outcry internationally that mm. uh, President Erdogan has to stop or or that his ability to move into this area is checked by determined Kurdish, Kurdish fighters, or that what he plans to try and do next, which is to move large numbers of Syrian refugees into this space, we well, can imagine how difficult that will be, uh, and that that doesn't work. So there are lots of ways in which uh, this chain of events that has been set off by that phone call between President Erdogan and President Trump uh, can go off the rails, uh, and in a sense, uh, America has kind of thrown its cards in uh, and stepped away and, and won't be able to uh, have uh, much control over how this plays out. And at, yet at the same time, and the ISIS story is a good example of that, America has such huge interests here uh, that it, it can't really afford uh, to, to not have uh, an impact and, and not be able to intervene in some way. Let's talk quickly, though, Keir, about the people, the thousands of people that are trying to flee northern Syria right now looking for safety. Who is supporting them? Where are they headed? Yeah, I mean, there are thousands, and uh, they will be heading for anywhere they can that they think is is safe. I mean, what President Erdogan is trying to do is create a 20-mile uh, kind of corridor along the border, so there will be other places uh, to go. Look, I've been to that part of, of Syria, uh, of Kurdish Syria. Uh, that It was a place that was largely peaceful, uh, you know, kind of different uh, ethnicities getting along pretty well together. Uh, uh, now, uh, of course, that's all up in the air. Uh, so it's a great question. I don't think they really know where mm -hmm. they, they, they should go. And, of course, uh, <laughs> their problem will be Turkey's problem, because in the end, you know, once you intervene, it's your problem. And, and, and that is another issue that will be facing President Erdogan um, as this all develops. Yeah. By the day, it seems as if this is turning into more and more of a humanitarian uh, crisis. Kelly, I want to talk about uh, the regional instability that could come from all of this. Turkey is backing this offensive into the area. You have 70,000 people now displaced, as I just mentioned, Akir. Uh, the Kurds 
Kurds in northern Iraq, they have pledged actually to send assistance across the border uh, to Syria. We don't know in which way they're going to be providing that assistance, whether it's through um, whether it's through uh, providing um, uh, uh, people or, or what, whatever way in which they want to provide that assistance. Could President Trump in this situation have inadvertently given Iran an opening to more move into northern Iraq to create a vacuum for Iran to move in? Well, quite possibly. I mean, I think uh, to your point earlier, the president has set into motion a series of, of negative security and humanitarian consequences for which there is no plan. Uh, you know, usually in a normal policymaking process, these plans are in place to deal with the potential mitigating circumstances. So whether it's a plan around, you know, refugees or a plan around, you know, how to deal with the Iraq and Iran situation, this would have all been considered well ahead of a decision like this uh, by the president of the United States. So right now, I suspect that the National Security Council, the State Department, the Defense Department are going through that contingency planning as we speak. Julie, I want to take a listen to what the president said about the offensive last night at his rally. So Turkey is right now waging a very tough campaign against the Kurds. We got along with the Kurds and we helped the Kurds. And don't forget, they're also fighting for their land. You know that. But they're fighting. So we have three choices. You ready? Here are the three choices. We don't have any soldiers there because we've left. We won. We left. Take a victory, United States. We left. Take a victory. Take a victory. Okay. Um, give me your reaction to that, Joel, because we do know that there yeah. are soldiers there and there were soldiers there, despite the fact that it may have been a small number, there was a, a certain amount of soldiers there. Um, have we won? Was there a win to be had? And how are potential future allies going to hear this? Yeah, Yasmin, uh, we had our foot on the throat of ISIS and Donald Trump just took it off. Uh, the United States is less safe today as a result of this horrible decision. And there's a bigger picture problem as well. I, I served at the State Department in the Bush administration when we invaded Iraq. And it was a, a depressing period. And I actually never thought I could feel as low about America's role in the Middle East. Uh, but today I do. Uh, I don't know which ally of ours in the region is going to trust us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now putting ourselves in an incredibly uh, precarious position regarding any kind of threat coming from the region. We have allies now who are going to look to others for support. The idea, as you just uh, mentioned, regarding Iraqi Kurds now getting sucked into Syria, uh, we don't want a regional war. That is not an American interest. Uh, we don't need to see further fighting. Is that where and you so feel like this could be headed? Uh, absolutely. We we were in a in a way the putting in or we were the stopper in the tub. And it's not as if Turkey and the Kurds uh, were not uh, threatening each other for years. This has been going on for decades. It's true. But we were a buffer and we were preventing the region from collapsing in that area in a direction where now we're witnessing it. And that can suck in actors from a variety of directions. And it's not as if we're going to be able to physically go and stop it. So this is a, an incredibly dangerous time. There is no real good planning for this because this is just a bad idea. And we need to have national security that's actually rooted in good thinking. And right now, uh, the president's playing with fire in the region that already has enough fires. So, Joel, quickly, just jumping off of the point that you just made, if there were to be a regional war, who would be the major players in this regional war? Who would be the leaders in this regional war? Uh, what what um, open space has the United yeah. States left in leaving uh, northern Syria? Um, and how would that affect people here? Well, we've essentially handed over Syria to Russia with Iran. And Russia right now is enjoying this situation with the U.S. pulling out entirely and Turkey closer to Russia now as well. So those countries are going to be the main protagonists. The U.S., we're not going to get in the middle of it. And we're going to watch our allies, as I'm sure Saudi Arabia is very nervous. I bet that's why the couple thousand troops were sent out there. Mohammed bin Salman called the White House and said, are you kidding? 
you're not backing up anybody in the region. And so the White House got nervous and is now sending reinforcements there. So uh, this is a slippery slope to which there is no easy end. We saw in the war in Iraq that there is no simple solution. Once you get into conflict, you can't just turn it off. And that's the danger here right now. Kelly, react uh, to me on that. Uh, the fact that we have now pulled out completely from northern Syria, given the green light to Erdogan uh, to move into northern Syria and now sending troops to Saudi Arabia, as Joel just brought up. Well, I would say that the new national security advisor is having a, a real banner week on coordinating U.S. Middle East policy, because just yesterday, the president of the United States was out saying he's bringing troops home and we need to end forever wars. And today, you know, the secretary of defense is announcing the deployment of thousands of additional troops to Saudi Arabia. It doesn't make any sense. This is all completely incoherent. Uh, and I think that is a result of a, of a national security apparatus that is essentially uh, having to manage Donald Trump's whimsical uh, impetuous decision making. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.